Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Martinis with Nick. I'm Philadelphia playwright Nicholas Wardigo, and today I am cooking some stuffed squid for my special guest, director David O'Connor. Hello. <laughs> David O'Connor is the resident director for Philadelphia Young Playwrights, where he has directed new plays and monologues by young writers for about 10 years. He teaches theater at Temple University, University of Pennsylvania, and the University of the Arts. And he's directed at various local theaters, including Arden Theater Company, Lantern Theater Company, and Philadelphia Shakespeare Company. At Philadelphia Young Playwrights, David also coordinates the Paula Vogel Mentors Project, which places young playwrights in mentorships with leading national playwrights. But that's not what he's gonna to do tonight. Tonight, he's gonna to be helping me eat cephalopods. Stay tuned. David, I want to thank you for coming and uh, agreeing to do this nonsense with me. My pleasure. I don't know what you're expecting, but very little. Excellent. Then you know what? I think it's all going to just fit in just fine. Yeah. What is it about <laughs> Philadelphia that's so seductive? Oh, I don't know if Philadelphia is seductive. You know, it, it isn't like a, a wooing process, right? With Philly, it's it's more of a bludgeoning. But the, yeah. Uh, well, it depends what you're into. That could be <laughs> wooing. <laughs> I worked at, at Yale for a year and then came to Philly. Is that how you know Paula Vogel through Yale? Uh, no, not at all. Through, I know Paula Vogel through, well, I don't even really know her. Like, I've, I've said, hey, what's up, a couple times. Oh! You know? Um, but, but, you, but, you, but you do that mentorship that's named after her. Yeah, right? that's right. That was, that's through Philly Young Playwrights. So, gotcha. Yeah, for their... I was kind of hoping it was like you and she in like a speakeasy. Yeah, that would be awesome, but no. A couple of cigars. No. We developed this program where we pair um, uh, awesome young playwrights from around the city with national caliber playwrights um, and put them in year-long year mentorships. Um, so they're working with, e working with each other, inspiring each other, both mentors and fellows inspiring each other's work. Um, and, and then after that year, um, you know, we, we look to the, men the, the fellows, the, the students, to pay it forward and continue to be teachers. Kiara this year is um, mentoring a young writer named Angela Bay, who is absolutely outstanding. She's a, she's a senior at Friends Select right now. And then um, by the time this interview comes out, I'm sure it'll be public knowledge that Angela won um, a competition at the National Constitution Center where they put out a, a uh, a call for young writers to write uh, towards a prompt there. Um, so she she wrote a play that's pretty interesting and innovative and kind of compares the the high school senior experience of like what am I going to do with all this newfound freedom with the hmm. historical moment of wrestling with oh, that uh, is a, 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 you know a, a democracy after only knowing a dictatorship, right? So, so it's like a macro and a micro. Wow, yeah, that is so, interesting. Yeah, it's pretty, um, and really insightful and really fun. Um, I, hate I mean, already, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's way more brilliant than anyone I know. Um, okay. Uh, uh, person company excluded. I don't think we should, uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. I don't think we should, uh, I don't think we should discuss her any further, otherwise it'll just be, yeah. Right, cool, all we'll, Angela. We'll just hate her more. Philadelphia Young Playwrights, like, at their core, you know, what we believe and put forward more than anything is that every young person has something really important to say, you know, and the fundament of what we do is go out into classrooms all across Philadelphia and the greater Philadelphia area and pair teaching artists, like working theater professional teaching artists with classroom teachers, leading classrooms through uh, a year-long playwriting program. 
the high school students, it's like, it's such an awesome experience, right? To have your sure. play like really taken seriously by some theater professionals and college students. And I started doing that and, and after a while it clicked, like that's my favorite work that I do. You know, I mean, I was directing a lot of plays by dead white men, you know, and, mm -hmm. and kind of going like, no, this is like way more interesting than almost any of the other work that I do. Uh, and, and I got kind of connected. I started doing a lot of teaching, going into classrooms and teaching with the young playwrights, which I didn't have un any understanding of how to do initially. Right. They just said, hey, you seem like really interested in this. You want to go into a classroom? And it was a disaster at first, but then did, did they started say, getting good at it. Did yeah. they say it with that hand gesture? And a lot of where my energy goes late, has been going lately is sort of tell the story of what we do. Um, put the kids out there as like examples of right. This is what po what's possible when you like give us your money, dear funders. You know. So it really is like Oliver Twist in the Army of Pickpockets. Yeah, there's less singing, but yeah. We can make up something. Oof, oof. We can call it a you know. We can call it an O'Connor. <laughs> Be like you know Kahlua and Seven Up. <laughs> That's not nice. I'm just kidding. We don't have any 7-Up. <laughs> what is your dream play to direct that you have not directed already? I don't have a lot of those dreams lately. No? Oh. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't dream a lot about, like, oh, what is that play that I really want to do? What is that story I'm dying to tell? Like, the closest I get is, is the work at Philly Young Playwrights. Is it because For directing sure. is awful? No, it's that the... I, I'm often thinking about like what is the story kind of most worth telling, and and I don't have I don't have that that answer that's like sitting right in front of me. Wait, is hum the correct answer? No. No. Okay. Cool. Was, I, was, I, was, no, just, I was just checking out. I mean, no, I love no, no, it. No, no, no. I love it. It's no, a great play. No, I was not But I don't that have all. you know the uh, the. Um, <laughs> you know what? What's that? That's actually the first time I haven't tried to sell something during one of these interviews. <laughs> but you're right. That should have been the obvious. Answer. That should have been the obvious answer. That that's correct. Yeah. Hum. I feel like I missed a trick there. Yeah. Kevin Glockham, if you're watching this, give Nick a call. I understand you have an interest in clowning. Why don't you feel that you're already annoying enough? <laughs> well, I feel like I'm annoying. Um, I think that's safe to say. Yeah, I don't feel like clowning equates to annoying. Oh, I think so. Oh, yeah? Oh, sure. Oh, you don't understand what Connie means then. I don't know. I'm just, I, uh, yeah. I've been around Bill Irwin. How awful that can be. <laughs> Bill Irwin is like the least annoying person I know in the world. But you don't get out. I mean, What's you, that? Just, you, just know, you just know annoying people. You just hang out with other directors and actors. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's not exactly a, you know, it's not a high bar to say he's the least annoying person you know. Well, you like, know me for God's sake. I was like, going to say compared to like you. You know, he's way not annoying. <laughs> well, sure. Mm -hmm. We're learning how to juggle and... Oh, yeah, you okay. Talking, you were talking about the, the, the Jewish juggling woman mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and she's, Just, in the, she's into clown. She's Sarah Felder. She's a really interesting clown maybe, herself. Maybe, maybe I misjudged. Maybe I'm just taking... I mean, I, I, love, I love clowning and actually like, three, three you know. Three different examples of you and a clown. Yeah. And I'm just extrapolating. I took a clowning workshop basically with, um, See, with, with uh, Pig Iron. I don't uh, know anybody. For, I, for a couple of weeks and it was awesome. It like changed my life. Well, then why and, are you, and I highly well, recommend then, it. Well, then why are you getting all defensive when I ask if you're talking about your interest in clowning? Clearly you have one. You're right. All right. You're 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 Dear God. You're, you're cutting to the cutting to it. No, it's this is interesting. Incisive. Like I, I I wouldn't have. It's like me in sixty minutes here. No, just like two minutes ago, I wouldn't have gone. I have an interest in clowning, but clearly I do. It's really true. I connecting the dots. I'm I'm out there doing the stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm the I'm like a flat foot. No, well, I'm learning a lot about myself. This is really awesome. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was at Williamstown Theater Festival, and and uh, where that's where Karen and I met. And at the time it was being run by a man named Mike Ritchie who had a, a really close relationship with Lewis Black. Um, and he, so this is kind of before he, like I feel like it was just before he exploded, like just before he hit it big with like The Daily Show mm -hmm. and, and all his 
HBO specials and things like that. So um, he's got a bunch of specials on Netflix, I know. Yeah. I mean, just incredibly funny guy, right? And so he was doing, I don't know, he was working on... What I was charged with that summer was sort of stage managing all the special events. But how long ago was this, roughly? This was 98. So, wow, okay. Yeah, so 17 years ago. Oh my God. That's yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And, um, and he, uh, yeah, so he was there um, doing both just sort of stand-up, doing a couple stand-up shows and then also working on like a one-man show that he was creating or something like that. But, um, but for, what I remember... For the festival? For the festival, yeah, okay. yeah. Or that he was working on there, you know, it's like this kind of thing where, it, you know, the festival would just sort of invite really interesting, talented artists to come up gotcha. to the Berkshires in the middle of the summer. Is it possible? Where all these hot, like, college interns walking around. And I walked in and I was hanging out and just sort of sitting at the bar and it was black, I was at the bar, like going, and he just had a newspaper like spread out on the bar in front of him and he was reading, reading, reading. And then he would like read, 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 and every once in a while he would like stand up and like try a joke on me basically. Like literally like yank off the page and try it out. Just you or just random people in the bar? Well, I'm sure random people in the bar. But you were. I happened to be one of the random you people. You were in proximity. Once, you know, but, but I could, you know, and I was sitting next to him and you know, and so I got like, I don't know, a dozen of these like over the course and I thought it was just really interesting the way like like that was how he was working read the paper and like hey yeah. is this funny okay oh that's that is sort of funny oh that's not funny at all I mean I think I'm actually a terrible audience member <laughs> like I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm a terrible yeah. I'm, yeah I'm not a good laugher no. you know someone was like describing that how important it is for a director to be sort of like the perfect audience member in the room to give good feedback a good feedback loop for the actors. I'm like, oh my god, I've been doing this wrong for like years. Like, uh, so I'm trying to be better at that now. I, I wouldn't sweat it too much. I mean, if someone's paying you, because you know, it, it's that's funny. a really low bar. Well, I'm just saying, if someone's paying you. Well, I'm just saying, like, well, like, yeah. a, couple, like a couple of years, like a doctor, ago. like you know, as long as they're paying you, like, what's the big deal, really? <laughs> Thanks again for watching Martinis with Nick. And thanks again to my guest, David O'Connor. Mm -hmm. And stay tuned uh, after the credits to see David O'Connor's hidden talent. Oh, shit. I'll juggle some oranges for you, <laughs> sure.